However, uh, it doesn't conduct electricity that well. And so what happens is you start seeing arcing. And after a while, the bearing burns out and fries. So uh, if that's the case, you want, first of all, you want to make sure that it is inverter rated so you don't run into that. There are companies, and pull this off the internet. Yeah, kind of a small picture, you can't see it. Well, that's a, that's a grounding ring, a split ring goes around the shaft, and it allows you to uh, uh, ground that shaft prevent that the bearings being chewed up. Yeah, they, they're called grounding rings. Honeywell does not sell them. Yeah. I, just, I went to the website, looked up grounding rings, and pulled them off the, uh, pulled a couple pictures off. But that, that's all they are. A grounding ring just goes on the shaft, and they have a split board, which is kind of nice. I didn't, I didn't know they had those types. But uh, there are companies that just make those things. And if, you, if, you have, if you're concerned about the motor, Old, young, I don't know if it's a inverter rate or not. Can't find that on the internet because the company that made it went out of business 18 years ago. Uh, first of all, you probably want to replace the motor. Uh, when you put a drive on new and you put on a new motor that's high efficiency, your savings are huge. The motor's paid for in six months. However, you know, if you're up in a bid and you have a condition where they, oh, we just got to put drives on, fine. But if you can sell them a new motor at the same time, go for it. Payback's really good. Yeah. So if you get a inverted, inverter rated motor, you're not going to have composite bearings. That's com that's correct. It's designed to handle an inverter. Would you say typically an older motor? To me, it seems an older motor would be less likely to have a composite bearing, and, and therefore, maybe an older motor even if it doesn't say it's inverter duty, it would probably be okay, other than yeah. the fact that it's already inverter duty. Yeah, and it depends on the, uh, whatever lubricant they use, too. Uh, if they're using a lubricant that doesn't conduct, then you might have a problem. But, um, yeah, an older motor would probably be safer there. A larger motor, for some reason, larger motors don't seem to have a problem. 50 horse or above. Yeah. We make uh, the smart VFD from one and a half 250 or actually we make them down half we call them compacts under the air they're right here half horse to uh, seven and a half for those sizes and then from here this particular the compacts are only that big these smart vfds are the ones uh, right here and they go from uh, one and a half to 250 horsepower i believe we stock up to 150 in the NXS models, they do go up to a couple hundred in stock. You know, they have 200 horsepower in stock. I actually sold a job where a guy called me up and said, I need 200 horsepower right away. He's in Louisville. And uh, if, you, if you got them in stock, and I had to keep from laughing because 200 horsepower drive in stock. Are you kidding me? So I called customer service. I said, by the way, have we got one in stock? Oh, yeah, we've got two sitting there in Louisville. Really? Yeah, they just drove his truck up to our warehouse, picked them up. Well, didn't pick them up himself, took a couple of guys, they weighed 350 pounds, and uh, installed it that day. So we do stock them. Uh, the, uh, we do have the uh, 575 volt ones for Equity Canada. We have 208, 230. You can wire these things to single phase in, but it's always three phase out. So when everyone says, well, I've got a single phase drive, well, you don't really. You have a single phase in, three phase out drive. So, and then you have to size it accordingly because it's not going to be the same size. If I have a 10 horsepower motor, I'm going to probably need a 30 horsepower drive in a single phase. Yeah. That's standard. That's not an option. That's just, it has you just got to yeah. size it right. Yeah. And there are some that work on 110, uh, 115 volt in, 230 out. So uh, you do have that option on the small ones. Uh, and uh, the lawn card is available. Yeah. The keypad, we're going to talk about that in some detail as we get into that one. Uh, the smart drive with the bypass. The bypass is not made by anyone. In fact, we don't even recommend it. 
Uh, we sell them, we sell them. Uh, but when I when I took the class, you know, one of our weakest points was our bypasses are a little bit expensive compared to some of them out there because there are a lot of bypasses that really are just electronic switches. Ours is a true bypass, it's mechanical, it's a relays. And when I took the training about 10 years ago on drives, we had a guy from England teaching us because Europe had our drives for years, and so we had their expert come in. And, uh, we had, I, I went through a class with the guys from Finland who couldn't understand. Uh, they, they used, their English was more British English with an accent and <coughs> parameters and parameters, things like that, which isn't, you know, okay, uh huh. And uh, they have no sense of humor. Yes, we did. Of course, why would they? It's cold up there, <laughs> kind of like Minneapolis. And uh, so they had me introduce the thing, and I said, I started off with a little thing about how, how we got these in. I said, no, right, cool, then what you want to do is make sure you connect the water hose right here to keep them cool. And the guys from Finland just kind of like, you, gotta, you can't say that. Oh. <laughs> Panic time. But, uh, <laughs> Hopefully, I loosened them up. They never came back. Uh, anyway, the uh, bypass. When we asked the guy from England about the bypass, he, whose bypass do you use? He said, "What? You got bypass? You hit the switch and bypass takes it." He said, "Why in the world would you do that?" He means it. All the safeties are in the drive. When you hit that bypass, you don't have soft start. You don't have safeties. You feel like you put in a full blast of air in that duct. You're, you're just raise your electric rate. Why in the world would you do that? It says here in the spec. He just couldn't understand. And he got to find out the United States is about the only place that still uses bypasses because the engineers are, well, they, they always did, they always will. Uh, we got to get to them. 25 years ago, the drives were not as reliable as they yeah. are today. <clears throat> so they, yeah, the yeah. engineers got on the bandwagon of specifying uh, uh, bypasses. If I had a job where I had a, let's say, a 10, a couple 15s, a 20 horsepower drive that wanted all bypasses, I'd say to the engineer, you know what, put a 20 in the closet, yep. keep spare. It's cheaper than buying bypasses for all those drives and it's safer. Because when that drive bites the dust and you hit that bypass, you have no protection on it, no phase loss protection, nothing in that motor. And you know the guy's gonna hit that bypass for any, any reason at all. And it could be a problem with phase. Things that alarm, hit the bypass. See, is there a difference in the filtering between the compact and the, the non-compact? Yeah, the compact doesn't have filtering under one horse. Yeah, so the smart VFD compact doesn't have filtering. Right, on the, uh, uh, the RFI filter is standard, but under a horse, it doesn't have the uh, mind reactor, the low frequency. But above a horse, like above a horse it does, yeah. <laughs> so above a horse, there's no difference between the compact filtering and the pitch to the <laughs> Yeah, there's not much difference. Uh, the price is better, but it's not as easy to program it. But yeah, it's, the compact is a pretty good deal. On a five horse, say, you go with the compact. Yeah, on the compact, if you're going, it only goes up to, it goes to seven and a half horse, but it's got to be a uh, 480 volt. If you're going 230 volt, the best it will do is uh, three. Okay. Yeah, you can see the, the bigger one would be seven and a half, probably five. And it's not as easy to program, it's more codes, so you need to book. Yes. Why does Honeywell offer a two contact for bypass? Cheaper. When someone says they need a bypass on this spec and you're bidding, <coughs> you want a two contact. And we have got the when we get the bypasses, I'll show you how to why a three contact is better. I'm gonna put one in. The uh, the interface is uh, designed to make it easy to commission and, and you'll be doing a little bit of that here if you want. I have four of them you can set up to play with each one of them. Uh, and it has the standard communication, the protections built in, and uh, to 